Hi guys, over the last few days I've been building some simple transmitters. One on the left is a VHF transmitter and I've already posted that on YouTube. This one is a medium wave transmitter. It's the sort of device that could be used to uh, transmit music, say from an MP3 player to a vintage radio. This one's only got a range of a few feet so I'm going to put a, a, a another stage on there and see if I can improve its performance. This is the unit that I want to talk about in this video. I can't tell you what its maximum range is but I can tell you for certain that it uh, will transmit easily uh, over uh, 120 feet. That's 40 meters which is more than enough for my requirement. This is the first project that I'm uh, building using uh, this method where I've cut the pads with a uh, little cutter I made. I'm going to make a little uh, two transistor transmitter and uh, the microphone is going to connect here so I've cut uh, that away and it'll be a little uh, electric microphone that uh, comes in from the side here. Uh, but I'll just give you a close up of the tracks that one I put the cutter in twice um, and you can see it's slightly larger than that um, as I obviously didn't uh, get it in the same place twice exactly I actually took the cutter out of the chuck and uh, resharpened it because I found I just had to uh, keep the cutter very sharp as this is a um, fiberglass board uh, so those are the pads uh, for the devices and then uh, this is going to be my negative rail and uh, this is going to be my positive rail so um, positive rail and the negative rail as I've said because this is a fiberglass board it's very aggressive and takes the edge off the cutter very easily if you're working with the brown phenolic board then the cutter will uh, produce more finished cuts before it needs sharpening. I found the circuit for the transmitter on the internet. I'm not sure who uh, invented it or developed it but I do know that it's available uh, in kit form and that's under the name of Voyager Mark II. So I don't claim any association with having uh, designed or developed uh, this uh, circuit. Uh, my only input here is uh, the printed circuit board layout is what I've chosen to do and I've uh, made it a, a little bit different to the circuit diagram that's on the net but that's simply because of the components uh, that I've got. So just so as you understand I'm not making this from a kit I'm making it out of discrete components that I've got in my junk box. The transmitter works with a 1.75 meter long uh, wire antenna and uh, at 9 volts it draws around 11 milliamps and uh, say with those conditions I can absolutely guarantee that it works well over 120 feet and uh, probably some beyond that. And reception of course is via a simple domestic uh, radio. This is the finished transmitter. I uh, could have made it a lot smaller but I simply don't need it to be any smaller. There are no holes drilled in the uh, printed circuit board. Everything is mounted on the top surface. There's no electrical connection to the underside. This transmitter has a much smaller tank circuit coil than the first transmitter I built and that means that the Q is higher given that they're both working at the same frequency and you can see this grey coil is <laughs> the coil of the first transmitter. The original circuit diagram specified a five turn coil uh, and uh, you'll see there I've actually got a four turn coil. 
It's a very simple circuit and uh, there are those seven circular pads and then the positive and negative rail so uh, not much to it at all. So here's the circuit diagram you'll see it's got uh, five resistors and seven capacitors and uh, two transistors, the microphone and the coil. Um, you'll see I've got the frequency marked at the top there as 80 to 100 megahertz. Uh, it is of course um, uh, adjustable by uh, changing L1 and uh, C7. On the original circuit diagram um, C7, that's what I've called it, they may call it something else, C7 um, ha and L1 had a different arrangement and uh, I haven't got the capacitors that uh, they had specified um, but I had got the 0.55 to 50 picofarads and what I've done is I've uh, adjusted the coil L1 um, to give me uh, an operating frequency around the 80, um, I think it's about 84, 85 megahertz, um, with most of the capacitor engaged, and uh, that's important, as that means for my chosen frequency, I've got the minimum amount of inductance and the maximum amount of capacitance and that has the effect of raising the Q and um, if you want to find out about Q look it up on the internet because it's it's involved um, but suffice it to say um, the way I've got it is uh, the best way um, given the components that I've got this is a close-up of that circuit and you can see on the left hand side uh, I've got L1 and the 5.5 to 50 picofarad uh, trimmer capacity and that's what I've actually got and um, on the right hand side uh, I'm showing there what was on the original circuit diagram they had L1 as five turns uh, with a one-eighth diameter um, by the way uh, I've got four turns with a three millimeter diameter anyway uh, they had L1 with five turns and then they had a 39 picofarad fixed capacitor and a 2 to 10 picofarad variable capacitor and uh, that's a very good arrangement and if I'd have got the components I would have used them but uh, I've achieved uh, a very similar thing by ensuring that I have most of my C7 engaged what it does mean is uh, I only have to touch the capacitor a little bit for a, a, a significant change in frequency whereas the uh, original circuit on the uh, right, um, that would have been a much finer tuning arrangement, and that's that's what you should do if you if you if you've got the parts. But uh, it's uh, it's amateur radio. You can do what the heck you like, and that's a nice thing about it. I want to try and give you some idea uh, how uh, significantly more stable this. Uh, sort of circuit layout is uh, than the previous ones I've shown in the uh, in the other video, and um, I'll uh, I've just got something recorded on uh, this device, little MP3. So that you can hear, hopefully, and. Uh, I'm do is I'm just going to put a and hopefully cut some of the feedback out. Now switch the transmitter on. And look at this.
Normally to adjust the trimmer I'd use uh, an insulated tool like this, a little uh, twiddle stick. That's an um, acoustic theme there. But look, I can use a, a metallic screwdriver. I find that really quite remarkable. Um, And in terms of uh, being microphonic, it's much reduced. I've got a thicker wire here. But um, I'm very pleased um, with the circuit. It, it's not my design, it's something I found on the internet. And my only contribution is in this particular uh, circuit layout. The battery is off the top of the page and the microphone is connected to the red and white wires uh, over to the left and the orange wire disappearing to the right is the antenna. Next I'll show you the component values as an overlay but what you can't see in this shot is the link connecting the fifth and sixth pad that's where the orange wire is to the variable capacitor if you want to study it stop it now okay you can see that link now I was going to have that additional 39 picofarad capacitor and uh, that's why I put that pad there but um, I didn't use it in the end that's the microphone right in the front there just moving off to the right I've had a load of fun playing with this uh, little transmitter and um, I'm learning new things all the time and uh, anyway uh, I've had a lot of fun. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.